Hello car PCers, this is Tom Berry, also known on mp3car.com as Bugbite, with a how-to on installing a car PC in your car. So you'd like to find out how to put this into one of these, so you can do some of this. So one of the questions that people have when they think about putting a PC in their car is, how do I power it? So let's take a look at how I did it in my car. The first thing I did was I found out a way to tap into the battery. My particular car has a, a sort of a power distribution block right on top of the battery. And what it does is it uses a set of fusible links. And what a fusible link does is it essentially provides the same protection as a fuse. If I draw too much power, it will, over a period of time, it will melt and it will protect my car from a fire. You should do the exact same thing. Put a fuse in line uh, with your cabling, put it as close to the battery as you possibly can to protect yourself in case it is short. Now, the actual connection to the battery, I use an 8 gauge piece of wire fairly thick. The Mac Mini that I use is about a 60 watt device. It's a relatively low low power draw device. So an 8 gauge wire looks pretty good for my setup. The power wire is connected to a crimped terminal ring which is bolted uh, directly to my fusible link uh, right here. Now the power wire then runs inside the engine compartment up to a hole that I've drilled into the side of the car and it runs into the dashboard from there and it runs into a second fuse. So I've got two sets of fusing protection. One is the fusible link to protect from high power draws in case the actual power wire gets a short in it. The second is a fuse that's in line with the power supply and is rated for uh, the appropriate amperage for my computer device. The power supply that I'm using is called a is by Carnetics. It's called a P1900. It's an 18 volt power supply and it's uh, sized and, and, and built specifically for the Mini. There are a variety of power supplies that you can purchase. This, the mp3car.com store sells several of those. Um, some of the most popular are the DS-ATX and the Opus power units. Okay, let's move on to the actual installation of the computer itself. I gave consideration to a lot of different places to install my system. I looked at the glove box. I looked at putting it underneath the dashboard underneath the rear deck in the trunk and ultimately I settled on a docking system that allowed me to, to install and remove the computer at will pretty easily so I could take it inside with me. Your mileage may vary, depends on uh, what your needs are, but give some consideration to heating and cooling, accessibility of the system, and the amount of disruption it does to your car and how, how easy or how difficult it is to run the, the wires uh, into your car. In my installation, the screen is an 8.4 inch Xenarc touchscreen. One of the things you want to think about when you're looking at touchscreens is their readability. Because my screen is up on the dash, it gets a lot of sunlight around it. I picked the Xenarc because I knew it was the brightest one that was available at the time. There are what are called transflective screens, which are much, much brighter and much easier to read even in high sunlight. They're also a lot more expensive. Okay, another major consideration for putting a car PC in your car, how you get sound out of it. In my case, what I did was I moved the head unit to the glove box, basically because I'm too cheap to buy an amp amplifier system. Uh, the sound output runs from the Mac Mini through wires into the dash and into an auxiliary input in the glove box. If you're looking for ideas on how to connect your computer to your car stereo system or how to upgrade it, Take a look at the FAC Emporium on mp3car.com. There are links that are directly to how to get sound out of your PC and into your car speakers. Okay, let's cover just a couple of the other items that I've got with the car. One is the antennas. I've got both XM and GPS in the car. The GPS is about a quarter sized antenna. It's a Royal Tech Sapphire. The other antenna is an XM antenna, which gives me satellite radio on the computer system. The XM is connected to an XM Direct box, which is then connected to a USB interface uh, that allows the computer and the front-end software to control the XM channel and uh, audio. In addition, I've got a USB hub hidden inside the dashboard, 
One of the outputs goes to this extension cord, which allows me to plug in various USB devices. I've also added a Griffin PowerMate into the system, and this is the primary volume control, and with the proper front-end software, you can actually navigate uh, using this rather than the touch screen. I've also got what's called a valet switch uh, connected to my computer. This is convenient. Sometimes you don't want the computer system to start up when you start the car, and sometimes you don't want it to shut down when you've shut the car off. So this gives you a sort of a manual control that allows you to control PC a little bit better. And here's an approximate breakdown of the cost uh, in order to do all of this installation. 